The Johnson's Wax Program with Silver McGee and Molly. <laughs> The makers of Johnson's Wax Products for home and industry present Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, Gail Gordon, Arthur Q. Bryan, and me, Harlow Wilcox. The script by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie is produced and directed by Frank Pittman with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. Have you ever noticed that no matter how carefully you wash your car, it still doesn't look as clean and bright as when it was new? Well, that's because water will not clean a car. It won't remove that greasy surface film built up by bugs, tree sap, tar, oil, and exhaust fumes. But Johnson's Car New will. It cuts through that film in no time at all. Car New does the job the quick, easy way. Here's how it works. Car New is wax fortified and contains powerful cleansing ingredients. Apply Johnson's Car New. The cleaning ingredients quickly dissolve stubborn, dulling film. Even the gummiest, stickiest grime disappears after just a bit of rubbing. Car new then dries to a white powder. Wipe that powder off, and almost like magic, your car is polished, sparkling bright. Car new cleans and polishes at the same time. One application is all it takes to give your car a really professional showroom shine. Ask your dealer for Johnson's Car new. With Car new, it takes less time and less effort to bring out the beauty of your car. <laughs> Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of your car. Some of the world's most daring speculators have never seen Wall Street, a stock ticker, nor a customer's man. Some of them just stand in the front window and speculate on what their husbands are so excited about as they come hurrying up the front walk. In this case, it's speculator Molly McGee and homecoming Fibber as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Ah, look at him running up the walk. I wonder what it is this time. Nobody's chasing him, so he must be... Hey, Molly. Molly. Hey, Molly. Hey, Molly, where are you? I'm right here, McGee. Sit down and catch your breath. You're wheezing like a pawn shop accordion. I'll say I am. Look... I was coming past Joe's Coke and Smoke Shop a while ago. Joe's Coke and Smoke Shop? Yeah. Isn't that where people go to vote on Election Day? Yeah. And where they stand around the rest of the year complaining about who they voted for? Yeah. <laughs> now, anyway, as I was walking past Joe's Coke and Smoke, what do I hear playing on the jukebox but I'm looking over a four-leaf clover? Well, now, you mustn't be too hard on Joe for that. Maybe the needle got stuck back in 1917 or thereabouts. <laughs> That's the very point. Four-leaf clover must be anywhere near 30 years old. Look at Little White Lies. Look at Babyface. All old songs have been revived and all making a tidy little fortune for somebody. I'm going to cut myself in on that dough, Snooky. Oh. <laughs> well, how? Write a song to be revived in 1978? No, sir. Better than that. Listen. I happen to have already wrote a song that was mighty popular back in 1916. A novelty number. You wrote it? Yep. That was a novelty. <laughs> Yep, and I think the time is right to revive it, right now. Put it on the market. Sweep the country with it. Well, what's the name of this big hit you're going to sweep the country with? I named it for me. It's called Fibber's Tune. Ah. <laughs> Very modest of you. Yeah. I'll go get my mandolin and play it for you. I got to have some kind of accompaniment when I sing. I never could sing Acapulco. <laughs> you never could sing what? Acapulco. That's a musical term. <laughs> Means no accompaniment. It's from the Italian "acca," meaning you're on, and "poco," meaning your own. <laughs> Acapulco, you on, you're on your own. See, <laughs> darling, how on earth do you learn all those things? <laughs> I didn't learn that one. <laughs> you know something? I didn't know you knew a word of Italian, and here you know two of them. I know three. Spumoni. Spumoni, what does that mean? I don't know, but it's an Italian word Well, I'll run upstairs and get my old mandolin I'm anxious to start reviving this song Now, just a minute, Beethoven yeah. Come in Oh, it's the old-timer, McGee Hello there, Mr. Old-timer Hi, old-timer Hello there, kids What you doing? Well, uh, we were just discussing an old song here to McGee's, Mr. Old-timer It's a song I'm going to revive and make some dough on, old-timer A lot of money in popular songs these days You ain't telling me, Johnny I used to be a songwriter myself yeah. 
You strut them and peddle them in Dead Pan Alley. You mean Tin Pan Alley. Dead Pan, daughter. That's what they all give me when I sung my songs for them. <laughs> Back in 1901, I wrote a dandy, kid. Yeah? I called it, Always Lay an Egg When I Try the Turkey Trot. <laughs> Yes, I did, too, didn't I? It sounds like it might have been a big seller. (laughs) No, but just lay there like a rusty car (laughs) crash. Of course, we didn't have any jukeboxes or radio or crooners in them days. No. How many copies of a song can you sell by having it sang by a singing waiter with adenoids and a walrus mustache that strains out all the best lyrics? <laughs> well, what was your biggest hit, Mr. Oldtimer? Well, daughter, I think my biggest hit was a campaign song I wrote when Grover Cleveland ran for president. Huh? Went like this. da dum pa dum 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 Boom. I'm looking over a man named Grover that I overlooked before. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> Probably taken from one of the classics. Yep, sure, but I give it up, kids. Yeah. All the songs I wrote had to be sung loud so you can hear them over a brass band or the rattle of beer stein. Nowadays, songs are all wrote for soft voice little fellas to gulp into a microphone that makes them all sound like Caruso. <laughs> Why, where'd this Crosby fella be today if he'd had to sing Throw him down, McCluskey, to the third balcony without a microphone. Well, I don't know where Crosby would be, but McCluskey would be way up on the hit parade. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good, Donner, but that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one fella says, the telefeller says, he says, <laughs> modern medicine is really going places. They just cured my uncle of stealing horses. They're true, says the telefeller. How they do it? Psychology? No, nope, says the first fellow. They give him shots. Three of them in the seat of the pants. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra and a fellow with an umbrella. <laughs> Right away, that a song like this one just can't miss. I predict it'll catch on like kissing on a hayride. Here, let me sing it for you. Oh, peanuts! How do you like it so far? Well, maybe it'll grow on me, dearie. Sure, it will. Wait till you hear him sing it on the radio this afternoon over at WVIS. On the radio? Sure. 
my goodness, those quiz shows will do anything, won't they? Oh. oh, didn't I tell you? Every afternoon, the King's men sing a bunch of songs wrote by local songwriters like me that they draw out of a hat, see? How do they draw you out of a hat? Huh? Oh, I see. You, they draw the songs out of a hat. Sure, they oh. draw the songs. <laughs> when the guy reaches into that hat this afternoon, there'll be a hundred song titles in that hat, and by an odd coincidence, every one of the song titles will be Fibber's tune by Fern <laughs> Heavenly days. How'd you ever arrange that? Well, that's a trade secret, my dear. Oh? Yeah. And the fact that the guy who holds the hat for the king's men to draw out of happens to owe me four bucks from the Oaks Club, that's got nothing to do with it. I see. Pure coincidence. Yeah. When you got a talent for writing and a talent for shooting angles like I got Tootsie, plus a natural musical talent and a talent for... Hold it, talent. That's probably Arthur Godfrey. <laughs> Come in. Oh, it's the weatherman, McGee. Hello, Mr. Williams. Good afternoon, Mrs. McGee. And, well, what's the mandolin for, McGee? Hmm? If you're thinking of becoming a wandering minstrel, I'll drive you to the edge of town. <laughs> no, I was just running over an old song I wrote, Foggy. And keep a tight grip on your hat, Mr. Williams, because of the drop of one, he'll sing for you. Yep. You're looking at the author of that dynamite song hit in 1916, which I'm about to revive and make a fortune out of, entitled Fibber's Tune, Foggy. Really? Mm hmm. Well, that's a foolish enough title to become moderately successful, McGee. Mm, thank you. I suppose everyone tries his hand at songwriting sooner or later. <laughs> I once tried it myself. That's all. Yes. Yes, I was running a weather station at the North Pole all alone at the time hmm. and took up songwriting to keep myself company. Hmm. That's a good way to keep yourself without company, too. <laughs> uh, what were some of your songs, Mr. Williams? Yeah, maybe we've heard them, Foggy. Well, I wrote one that the Eskimo women used to sing when their husbands went out whale hunting. I called it Blubber Come Back to Me. <laughs> Sounds vaguely familiar. But I think my best song was one I wrote about a young Eskimo lad who came into camp one day and drank all the alcohol out of our thermometers. Really? What'd you call that song? The Nature Boy. <laughs> brother. <laughs> no wonder you were alone up there. Were you really all by yourself, Mr. Williams? Oh, yes, yes. My only companion was a young penguin that hung around my camp. Oh, a penguin. Those are the little birds that always wear tuxedos, aren't they? Uh, yes, yes. He was a great help to me, this penguin. I shall never forget the time my supply ship failed to arrive. Yeah. That little penguin found me almost dead from starvation and saved my life. Oh. Saved your life? My gosh, he must have been smart. No, but he certainly was delicious. <laughs> Good day, probably. Foggy bailed out of here so fast, I didn't even get to sing my song for him. Mm-hmm. And he thinks the North Pole was a narrow escape. Oh. <laughs> he can hear it this summer on every jukebox and radio set in the country. Maybe he'll stay in the city. Even so, he can't escape it. Hey, listen to it again. Oh, peanuts. <laughs> Looks like your song hit is starting to ring the bell, dearie. Yeah. Maybe this is somebody else I can try it out on. Come in. Hello, Molly. Hi, Pat. Hello, Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Come on in. Hi, Junior. Pull up a chair and listen to the greatest 1916 song. Oh, gee, I've had a swell afternoon, kids. I was over at the club taking a swim and ran into a friend of mine who just bought a new car. Well, that's fine, Junior, but Said I... he took it out on the road over the weekend, got it all grimy and dusty. Yeah, but... He was I... pretty discouraged about losing that beautiful showroom shine it had till I told him how easily he could get it back with Johnson's car new. Oh, is he eager today? <laughs> well, when I explained how car new does what water can't do, it dissolves the greasy film that makes dirt and grime stick to your car, and how easily the dust and grease and traffic tarnish comes off with car new, he was delighted. Now, when I told him it was just a simple job, that you just rub car new on, let it dry to a white powder, and then wipe it off, and all the dirt comes right with it, leaving your car bright and gleaming again, he was so tickled. Oh, peanuts. <laughs> hey, is that your mandolin, pal? Why don't you put some strings on it? Doesn't make any noise. Doesn't make any noise. You keep banging on it, but I can't hear any... Oh, <laughs> you know what? No. I got through swimming this afternoon and forgot to take my earplugs out. 
<laughs> That's silly. Ah, yeah. oh, there. Now I can hear. Were you saying something, pal? I was trying to say, Junior, that I'm about to revive one of the big song hits in 1916. A little ditty entitled Fibber's Tune, which I wrote myself. That's and... great, pal. That's great. But look, let me tell you about Johnson's car, New. You've got a car. You just and Billy... told us about car, New, Mr. Wilcox. Certainly. You met a guy at the club. Did I and you tell told... you that? Why, sure. Gee whiz, kids, I had these earplugs in and I didn't hear it. Thought I'd forgot to mention it. Oh, well. Harlow. Uh, Harlow. Yeah. Old boy. Sit down here, will you? Sure. Relax. You're going to hear a revival of the greatest song hit you ever heard, sung by the composer himself. Okay, composer, okay. Let me do one thing first. What, Mr. Wilcox? Put my earplugs back in. <laughs> I don't want to lose them, and I figured oh, that was a look, good look, Laxie, I got a TL for you. You put in all the plugs you're going to this season. <laughs> so now go home and come back in October. Okay, pal, thanks. Happy summertime, Thank kids. Same to you, Mr. Wilcox. Try and find anybody around this neighborhood with any musical depreciation. <laughs> hey, how do you like the song by now, Molly? Is it growing on you yet? Well, uh, I'm not quite sure, dearie. I'll think it over while I'm upstairs sorting the laundry. Oh, okay. Uh, you keep singing... Okay. Uh, you keep singing it to yourself, and maybe you'll get tired of it before long. Oh, okay, kiddo. Ah, there goes a good kid. <laughs> she didn't realize when she married me that she was getting into the big dough. <laughs> She thought I'd be an old man before I hit the jackpot, and here we are on the road to riches, and I'm still on the... Ooh, don't time fly. <laughs> I didn't realize I... Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hi, sis. I'm glad to see you. Here, toss the torso in a chair and take the tension off your metatarsals, Teeny. Well, I... Hmm? Hi. I said, aren't you out of school a little early this afternoon, sis? Oh, sure. Hmm? Me and Willie Toops got out early for a reward, I bet you. Oh? On the counter, we got a hundred in history today for doing our homework right. Oh, you did, eh? And our teacher, hmm? I said you did, eh? Who did? You and Willie, too. Did what? Got a hundred. Where? In history. Where? Today. Why? For doing your homework right. I know it. <laughs> you doing with the guitar, mister? Hmm? <laughs> you gonna be a cowboy star this summer, hmm, are you? Hmm? No, no. And this isn't a guitar, Teeny. It's a mandolin. <laughs> As a matter of fact, though, I was in a western picture one time years ago. Oh, really, yeah. mister? Did you ride a horse and play guitar, hmm? No, no. This was just a small part. I rode a Shetland pony and played a ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as you asked about this mandolin, I'll, I'll play something for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll sing you a little song I wrote myself back in 1916, sis. It's going to be a big hit this summer. The King's Men are singing it on the air, and you'll hear it on jukeboxes, radios, merry-go-rounds, sheet music. Oh, boy. Will my mama be able to get the music and play it on our piano, mister? Will she on our piano? Why, sure she will. Mama can't play the piano. <laughs> well, then she can have somebody play it for her. We haven't got a piano. <laughs> Okay, skip it. Here's how it goes. Oh, peanuts go with popcorn. Sunrise goes with dew. Donuts go with coffee. And I want to go with you. Oh, how you like it so far? Oh, let me out of here. <laughs> Kid, but she never answered me. Or did she? McGee, do you know what time it is? Quick, turn on the radio. Oh. It's time for the King's okay. Men. Okay. Bring you at this time that popular singing group, the King's Men, with a series of songs by amateur composers. This is it, kiddo. I hope they don't butch it up. The opening number has been drawn out of the hat, and it's Fibber's Tune by a Mr. Fibber McGee. That's it. <laughs> For better or worse in a two-room flat. For better or worse in a two-room flat. Each and every living thing from amoeba down to a jungle king went looking for its natural mate. Cause two by two is a natural state. Two is a natural state. Oh, peanuts go with popcorn. Sunrise goes with you. Donuts go with coffee. And I want to go with you. Oh, bacon goes with hen fruit. Carrots go with stew. Everything. 
something goes with something, so I want to go with, I want to go with, I want to go with you. When Laura built that great pit boat, he doubted if she'd ever float. Cause one of each he could not bring. He had to take two of everything. He had to take two of everything. In this world so full of flaws, the very best of nature's laws is the one that took its maiden trip on Father Noah's partnership. Noah's partnership. Oh, corned beef goes with cabbage, red and white with blue. Mustard goes with hot dogs, and I want to go with you. Oh, even Wallace Wimple goes with you know who. Everything goes with something else. It's a thing that a thing must do. So I want to go with you. Wonderful, McGee. I'll have to admit, I really like it. Certainly, everybody will like it. You're going to hear Fibber's tune on every radio program in the country. Except maybe We the People and Caltenborn. <laughs> I'll bet I can get Caltenborn to discuss it in terms of world peace. Well, <laughs> sounds wonderful, dearie, but just what radio program do you think you can get it on and how? That's a cinch, baby. Who's got a musical show that'll be sponsored by Johnson's Wax this summer? Every Monday and Wednesday morning at Consult Your Local Newspaper for the exact time. Who? You mean Fred Waring? Natch. I'll call him up right now. Hand me the phone. Here. Take a little more cord. It's a long-distance call. Okay. Ah, oh, interruptions, interruptions. Come in. Oh, McGee, it's Dr. Gamble. Do come in, doctor. Thank you, my dear, and good day to you, wet wash. <laughs> Hi, Lancelot. Is it true you lost your satchel last week and three patients got well before you could find it? <laughs> now, McGee, I wish you wouldn't talk that way to the good doctor. Yeah, well. Man of his professional standing is entitled to a little respect. But not as little as I get from him. Hmm. If he did a little more professional standing and a little less professional sitting, his experience would be wider and his pistol pockets narrower. <laughs> <laughs> not to change what seems to you to be such an enjoyable subject, Scuttlebutt, May I ask how you intend to take the swelling out of that banjo? Well, that's not a banjo, Doctor. That's a mandolin. He's been playing an old song he wants to revive. Well, his mandolin playing is a strange way to revive anything. What is this beggar's opera you're promoting, Bucklewart? <laughs> it's called Fibber's Tune, Tone Deaf. <laughs> I wrote it myself in honor of myself. <laughs> he says it was very popular back in 1916, Doctor. So was Russia. <laughs> Let me dash off a few bars for you, Ducky. You love it. Oh, peanut! Look, 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 my boy. Ours has been a long and stormy friendship. Let's not strain it, huh? <laughs> I know your voice, and I don't mind saying that I've heard better singing done by a pigeon on a stool under a hot light at the police station. <laughs> now look, I'll get that. McGee's residence, Gamble speaking. Who? Oh yes, Mrs. Clatterhatch. Oh, her again. How's that, Mrs. Clatterhatch? Your husband lost his nose in a lodge election argument? Oh. I'll be right over. Oh my gosh, Doc. Lost his nose? Yes, he was counting the votes when the fight started. Yeah. Saved most of the S's, but lost all of his nose. Oh. <laughs> my summer kids are missing. Ah, dear old Doc. I'll put in a good word for him anytime. If I could think of a good word, that wouldn't get me pinched. Well, hey, let's go in here. Hand me the phone. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Fred Waring in New York. Yeah, the New York. If it won't make you too jealous, McGee, tell him I think he's wonderful. Okay. Boy, when Fred and I get this song revived, they'll... Oh, okay, operator, put him on. Hello, Fred. This is Fibber McGee. No, no, McGee. Molly's husband. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I want to help you out, Fred. You want to help him out like Dewey wants to help Truman out. <laughs> Look, Fred, I've got a song I'm promoting. I wrote it myself in 1916, and confidentially, it's terrific. <laughs> It's a revival and hotter than a pistol. Listen to this, Betty. What do you mean you don't like it? I ain't even sung any of it yet. That was my mandolin. Sing it out the polka, dearie. <laughs> you ready, Betty? Well, here she goes. Oh, 
peanuts go with popcorn, sunrise goes with you. Donuts go with coffee, and I want to go with you. Oh, hello, 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 Fred. Hey, Fred, hello, hello. Oh. Hmm. Must have been cut off. <laughs> I'll call him back later. Well, you know, it's very difficult to interpret a fine musical selection over the phone, dearie. Uh, why don't you mail him a copy? Yeah, I'm going to. I'm going to ask him to feature it on his first show for the Waxworks next Monday morning. If he likes it. You don't think he hung up because he didn't like it, do you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. How could anybody dislike it? A frightening question. <laughs> Anyhow, it sounded great when the King's Men sang it. Couldn't have got very bad in ten minutes. <laughs> Look, you say you wrote this song? Yep, I wrote it. You say it. it was very big in 1916? Biggest song I ever handled. Sixteen pages. I had to cut it down to get anybody to look at it. I see. And it was very popular? Very. With whom? With me. I liked it better than any song I ever wrote. Funny I could never sell it. You mean it never was published? Nope. But now that I've revived it, we'll make it... Tell the me big... one thing. How can you revive a song that was never published? Ah, uh ah. -huh. You put your finger on the big talking point, kiddo. That's it. This is the first song I ever wrote that was revived before anybody ever heard of it. What a novelty. What a... Hey... Let me run over it again for you. Uh, please do, and I'll help you, dearie. Oh, peanuts go with popcorn. Sunrise goes with you. Donuts go with coffee. And I want to go with you. Oh, bacon goes with hen fruit. Carrots go with stew. I'm going on vacation. And I'm going to go with you. Nothing tough or tiresome about polishing your car if you use Johnson's Wax Fortified Car New. As a matter of fact, with Car New, it's really quite simple and easy to make your car bright and shiny. You merely apply Car New with a dry cloth, rub just a bit to loosen road dirt and grime, then let dry to a white powder. Wipe off the white powder and presto, your car is polished. You see, Johnson's Car New does two jobs at once. It cleans and at the same time it polishes to a bright, shining luster. The secret is that Carnew dissolves that sticky traffic film built up by bugs, tree sap, oil, and exhaust fumes. Water alone won't remove that greasy road grime, but Carnew will, quickly and easily. No aching elbows, no aching backs. Car beauty comes easily when you use Johnson's wax-fortified Carnew. Try it and see for yourself. Yes, sir, you show me a man who's used Johnson's Carnew, I'll show you a man who's found the easy way to bring out the beauty of his car. Look on the bright side, shine up the right side, bring out the beauty of your car. Well, it's about that time of the year again, dearie. Yep, yeah, Fred Waring takes over for the Johnson people next week. Every Monday and Wednesday morning, all summer. That's wonderful, and it's been another happy season for us, too, hasn't it? Swell. With all our good friends who keep listening to us. Honestly, I don't know what we'd do without them, McGee. Well, I do, but I don't like to think about it. <laughs> I wish there was some way we could say thanks to everybody who's been so nice to us all year. You know what I think they'd like us to say by this time? You mean? Yeah. Oh, good night. Good night, all. Bill McGee and Molly will be back October 5th. In the meantime, the makers of Johnson's Wax Products bring you Fred Waring and his Pennsylvanians every Monday and Wednesday morning. Consult your local newspaper for the correct time and tune in next Monday morning, won't you? This is Harlow Wilcox saying good night. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.